Hi, Brockton residents. This is Mayor Sullivan. I want to again thank you for tuning in. This is the 33rd episode of Our Brockton, and the title speaks for itself. It's Our Brockton, it's our home, it's our community. I am so honored and privileged to be joined today by a special person, special Brocktonian, a professor, an educator, historian, uh, Willie Wilson, Jr. Mr. Wilson, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for I having really me. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Now, you're an icon in Brockton. Everybody <laughs> knows Willie Wilson. Um, you give so much time to the community, uh, teaching the youth, educating, talking about the historical components of what Brockton, and of course, North Bridgewater. Um, but if people don't know you, do you mind just maybe just telling the, the viewers who you are? Okay, my name is uh, Willie Wilson, Jr., and I grew up on the east side, uh, a long term, uh, long time Brocktonian, uh, attended the uh, local school, Sprague, the Payne School, mm -hmm. which is where I work now at the Adult Learning Center, and then uh, East Junior High, which is now East Middle School, and then Brockton High. And uh, I graduated in June of 1970, and uh, in September, the current high school on 470 Forest Ave opened up. And, uh, but I, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've taught, uh, you know, at Brockton High, I taught American minorities, uh, African American history, a course called The City. I was in the social science department. Um, and then I taught uh, for a period of time in Worcester and then was assistant principal in Worcester and then principal in Shrewsbury. Came back to Brockton in 1999, uh, was the department head for yes. social studies sure. in the Azure. And, uh, and, and for many years, I was curator for the Brockton Historical Society. And, uh, and so I'm just glad to, uh, to come and, and be a guest. Uh, this is the 33rd uh, episode it of is. your, of your show, and I'm just glad to be here. Well, this is a historic month, February mm -hmm. being Black History Month. And do you mind, because you've taught me a lot, and you've taught a lot of other Brocktonians, some of your um, knowledge of, of Brockton, and, and it runs the gamut. It's such a historic city. Do you mind sharing some, some insights for some of the viewers? Oh, sure. Um, one of the things I'd like to say right off is uh, uh, this whole area was settled in 1649, mm -hmm. and for those people who haven't had an opportunity uh, at, to visit Sachem Rock, where the, the actual uh, deed was uh, consummated with uh, Miles Standis and uh, and uh, Sachem Massasoit and uh, Mr. Southworth. It's in East Bridgewater, and it's it's Sachem Rock is a huge outcrop of rock. And uh, when you look at it and compare it to, like, say, Plymouth Rock, it's uh, it's unbelievable. And and unlike Plymouth Rock, in which there was no no sale or agreement, Sachem Rock was actually a, a deal done with uh, uh, the indigenous people in the uh, English colonists. And so it's, uh, it's right uh, in East Bridgewater near the uh, elder, uh, the council on uh, the elders in, in that town. And it's just beautiful. Mm. So I always encourage people to, to, to visit, but that's 1649. And then we have uh, white settlers coming into the area 1697. And then uh, on the our city seal, it says 1700 when we were settled, and then, uh, uh, you know, as the uh, settlement grew, we had, uh, we became North Parish, and uh, it actually, uh, the town of North Bridgewater was established 1821, and then in 1874, uh, we actually became Brockton, but it wasn't until 1881 that we incorporated as a city. Wow. And uh, so it's a very, very rich history. But this being Black History Month, I thought I would share some, uh, some insights concerning uh, the local African-American population. So first of all, I'd like to say uh, in, our, in my research and my documentation, the first person of color that I have been able to ascertain uh, uh, goes back to a, a gentleman called Scipio. And, and uh, we have maps of the area uh, 1736, uh, 1750, 1830, uh, and so on. But in the, it, it, he paid a poll tax in 1744, and that's how we know he was, you know, a, a, actually a freeman. So uh, Scipio, he owned a parcel of property uh, near the current uh, VA. Okay. 
uh, on the west side, and then he owned another piece of property on the east side, not too far from the Downey School. And, uh, and so he's our first, you know, when I talk about local, he's our first person of color Scipio. So that's 1744. 1744, yeah. that's amazing. It's amazing, it's amazing. And, uh, and, and so this is why documents are so important. And, uh, and, uh, and so we, we go from there, of course, it's, it's, uh, we were still part of the British colonies. And, um, and uh, from there we have, there were slaves. So although he was free, there were African-Americans who were slaves. Slavery was uh, uh, practiced here in the, the Northeast, but it was very different from that as uh, practiced in the South. And then we have uh, the 1783, uh, when the legislature did away with slavery. Mm -hmm. And we have a situation where a lot of former slaves changed their names. Uh, uh, and so a lot of times they were just known by their first name or belonging to a certain family. And so, uh, and so many people left and went different places. And, uh, and so uh, you have uh, an increase in, in uh, the African-American population due to migration and, uh, and then repopulation intermarriage with uh, indigenous people as well as whites. Mm -hmm. And so as uh, you can see, as the, as the settlement grew from particularly 1821 to 1881, that period of time, uh, more and more African-Americans migrated from the South here and, uh, and of course, th they were impacted very much so by uh, the Civil War. And that's where <clears throat> I wanted to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, the Civil War, uh, because uh, where your office is, that's City Hall, that was uh, originally, if City Hall is located on School Street, that, that's, that was a school where City mm. Hall is located now, that, hence the name School Street. School Street. And, uh, and City Hall was built in 1894 as a memorial to the Civil War. And that's why the designs, um, we have the beautiful portraits. Oh, the artwork is The artwork beautiful. is outstanding. Uh, the GAR room the upstairs. The GAR room. Yeah. Uh, and then if you notice in the rotunda, that, that, that's why the attribute to all the people who've died, even from the Revolutionary period, yeah. Their names are um, actually chiseled in marble and granite. And, uh, and, and, and that is the building, it's just beautiful. It was, of course, uh, uh, the library at the time when it was built, the library was on uh, uh, the second floor. Mm. And, uh, and so the, uh, it, it's just one of the most beautiful buildings. Uh, just recently, I, uh, Corey Dolgan at Stonehill College a colleague of mine, he uh, had a group of students and I gave a tour of City Hall in the downtown area. Um, and uh, it's just a beautiful building. Well, it, during the Civil War, one of the uh, uh, people from uh, North Bridgewater, Lemuel Ashport, uh, he was born in Taunton in 1846 and he fought in the 54th Regiment. Now he wasn't, he didn't participate in the assault on uh, Fort Wagner because mm -hmm. he was ill, mm -hmm. but he, uh, he came back to North Bridgewater and he became um, Brockton's first black police officer. Really? Yeah, so Lemuel Ashport, and that's in the, I want to say, 1888. Wow. Uh, and, uh, and so he is, um, he is one of the, the people that stands out in terms of local history, but we have others. And the reason why he's so significant is he married uh, a woman uh, and uh, she was uh, from Pembroke and uh, her uh, maiden name was Pierce. And uh, her first name will, will come, come to me. Uh, but they married and they had uh, three daughters, Pearl, Mabel, and Ash, and uh, Pearl, Mabel, and, uh, oh, I can't think of the third. But Pearl, his daughter Pearl, graduated from Brockton High in, uh, in 1907. 1907. And Brockton High was established in 1864, first graduating class in 1867. Uh, okay. And Pearl, uh, I actually got to know and interview, and, 
And so uh, she, uh, would dis she was describing, because hitherto she was at the former Brockton High, which was where the, uh, the library is, the main library. So she was describing, and now, of course this is in the 1970s, she's describing how she uh, went from this old school where the library is to this brand new school which opened up in 1906, the A building. Yeah. And, uh, and she was saying, oh, Willie, she said, we had electricity and gas lamps and the new science labs. And, <laughs> and so I'm trying to wrap my head around what she's talking about, the newness. She just remembered it so vividly. And, and here I am at the current high school yes. on 470, but it's just in terms of time. But uh, she, uh, uh, you know, again, in her own right, was a, just a fantastic person. In that same class, we have uh, Mary Revis, who also graduated, class of 1907. And, uh, and I don't know if you remember, we had Denise O'Malley, her grandmother also graduated in that class that in class that of 19, class. 1907. And, uh, but what happens is Mary Revis went on to what was then Bridgewater Normal School. Uh, but the, the, you know, that's how I kind of trace. People always ask me, how do you trace the, the history? And I, and I really do, because I was a teacher and I use, you know, the records from public schools. Well, we're so thankful you do that because I mean that tells the story and that is the building block to try to get you know get back in time to see where we are now. Right. Uh, all those people that gave back to the community then that's why we we are where we are now. Now, 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 Mr. Wilson. People talk about Frederick Douglass being in Brockton and the Liberty Tree, which was High Street, and now it's Frederick Douglass Avenue. Can you, from your experience and your your studies and your your really your research, can you maybe? talk a little bit about that because some people are very confused about it. Was Douglas really here and was Garrison really here? And oh what, yeah. What, could you share that? Oh yes. Yeah. So, so what happened is uh, before, the, um, um, before the Brockton Enterprise, we, we had a paper which was the, uh, um, oh I want to, I think I want to, uh, the North Bridgewater Chronicle I think it was called. And so a lot of those records, as a little boy at the main library, they used to keep those in the historical room. Wow. But a lot of those we've lost. But uh, he, uh, Frederick Douglass visited Weymouth, he was in uh, North Bridgewater. And so the tree, the Liberty Tree, which we, we had to tear down because of many reasons, uh, had to be removed. And we use that sycamore, the oak, the sycamore, the wood from that, we use for uh, uh, two huge tables, Southeastern, the students at Southeastern Vocational Technical High School in Eastern did a marvelous job uh, making tables. We had an engineer that designed a, an iron platform for both. So we have one at the Historical, historical society, society and we have one at the, the main library. Wow. And, uh, but, Frederick Douglass was just a phenomenal. He's my, he's my American. He's my favorite American. And this is uh, Black History Month. And one of the reasons why uh, February was chosen by Carter G. Woodson in 1926, he's called the father of Black History Month. Uh, what he did was, it, you know, it was Fred Frederick Douglass's birthday, Lincoln's birthday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so that's, it was first a week and then it developed into a month. And, uh, but Frederick Douglass came here and where the tree was, now there's another yes, offshoot. Yes. So it's almost like another full tree. And, uh, and some of my students and other citizens have remarked, it's just like, you know, freedom. You can't fight it, you can't kill it. That's right. It always will continue to grow. But, uh, and so as a result, uh, it's just, uh, it's just a wonderful testimony to the city. And one thing about the Liberty Tree is, and this was amazed me when I became mayor, um, the city doesn't own that tree. That's actually private, privately owned. So I'm working right now with our city planner and our law department um, to try to acquire that. I think it's an appropriate uh, acquisition because we, we, we want to maintain the history. There's a little plaque there that's right. there. We want to make sure we clean it up. And the Hotel Grayson's, of course, going to be uh, built out soon uh, on the corner where Kresge's used to be. Uh, Brockton Beer Company's going there. It's the first black-owned brewery in the whole Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And a Patty's Lane where the Irish, where my, you know, where my relatives lived, mm -hmm. was up there, too. And, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're a historian. I mean, and, and mm -hmm. I say that with the most respect. Mm -hmm. You know history. 
Um, could you, we only have, believe it or not, five more minutes to go. Could you summarize uh, what you think is the most important aspect of Brockton history if you were a youth right now? If you were teaching up at Brockton High like you did so, for so many years, um, what's the most, one thing that you feel is the most important part of history right now in Brockton? Well, I, I think uh, first, you know, I would, you need to stress that uh, people of color, African Americans were here. And one of the things from my interviews with senior citizens, uh, especially during the Brockton's golden age, you know, people got along. And I, and I, I see similarities now in the, in the 2020s, you know, and I used to ask them, I said, what, wasn't there tension, weren't there? And they said, no, because there were jobs for everyone um, and, and there was such a respect for the various ethnic groups. And, and that's amazing. So what I, the lesson for students is that, first of all, don't feel that you, you are not, this is your place, this is your city. So you, are, you have a right to be here, uh, but you need to pursue the best that you can be mm. because there are others who've gone before you who've done the same thing with less resources, fewer resources. I agree. So, so that, that's, the, that's what I would stress uh, and, and I know a lot of stu my students used to say, what happened to Brockton? You know, because they, you know, with the shoe industry and, and all of the, you know, the first electrically powered theater yeah. and the first electrically powered uh, uh, station, as you know, uh, Thomas Edison used the city of Brockton as his lab. That's right. And so, uh, but I tell them, I said, you know, there's still a greater Brockton coming. You know, I said, you can be a part of that. That's so, right. you know, just to, that they should have hope and, and look to the future in which uh, things can even be better. You know, I think you just summed it up. I mean, we have to learn from our history, from our past to forge ahead for the future. And, um, you know, you, you're a gentleman, number one, a wonderful educator. Um, you worked with my father at Brockton High for a very long time, and you were just so well respected by everybody at Brockton High and throughout the city as a whole. I want to thank you for joining us today. I really, truly mean that. I wish you and your family all the best, and I'm going to open up an invitation for you to come back anytime. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a little aspect of, of what you have, and I know you can share so much more. So anytime you want to join us on our Brockton, you're my yeah. guest at all times. I just want to thank you very thank much you. for you everything for that you've me. done. And, and the best is yet to come with you, Mr. <laughs> Wilson. There's no <laughs> doubt about you. that. Thank you. Thank the you. The best to you and your family. Thank you. So again, I want to just uh, thank you for tuning in to the 33rd episode of Our Brockton. Uh, I'm Robert Sullivan, uh, Mayor of the City of Brockton. It's an honor and privilege to serve. Uh, we are better together here in the City of Champions. And again, for the month of February, of course, it's Black History Month, but it shouldn't be isolated to just one month. So let's continue to, to encourage and love here in the City of Champions. Be well. Thank you.